Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on one of my favorite series of reels that Penn uh, has ever made. This is the GS series. This is the Penn 525. It's a, well, it's a round bait casting reel. It does not have the level wind feature. It is used in saltwater fishing. It's about the, uh, the frame width of a Penn uh, 155 which is the old Baymaster. This one, of course, has a graphite frame to it. It has additional ball bearings. Uh, just a lovely reel all around. These were sent in by Captain Lou. He's out on uh, Long Island. He sent me about 25 of these to service. Well, this one, uh, this one's struggling, so I thought maybe we would do this one. Uh, there's several of these that have had the worn spring. Of course, that's like a, uh, a metal hanger. Uh, if you just keep moving that spring enough times, it will break. Not on this one, but it's broken on others. He called it spongy, but uh, we're going to have to replace some springs on those. And just general overall service for the, the variety of these. One of the things that's nice is Lou runs a uh, charter boat, and these are actually in very nice condition for a charter boat reel. So you can see they're clean, they're not corroded, and the like. Well, this is, uh, as I mentioned, it's one of my favorite reels. It was uh, manufactured until 2003, I believe, is when it was discontinued. So you're looking at a reel that's almost 20 years old and still has that nice uh, look and feel to it. Well, we're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how the reel uh, is made and how to service one of these if you have one. And well, we'll talk a little bit about the manufacturing design as we do that. If you like these kinds of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos like this. And uh, well, you'll have the opportunity to see if that's a video that you would be interested in. I work on all kinds of fishing reels. This one is a saltwater reel. I work on freshwater reels. Uh, everything from pond to bass reels, uh, low profile bait casters, spinning reels, whatever's out there, whatever comes into my shop, generally speaking, well, that's what you uh, you get to see in the, uh, the service videos. So please subscribe and use that notification button. Well, one of the things I like to do before I service a reel is test it. I just put this in free spool. You're going to notice there's no sluggishness in the spool itself. Well, that means that the issue here about the hard to turn reel is in the gear side plate. Um, just a quick troubleshooting thing to do so you know where to look when it's time to, uh, to get underneath the, the reel. When you see something like that, well, you have a couple of suspicions. One of the suspicions that you have is that it could be uh, something as simple as dried grease could be something more complicated, like uh, a broken piece of part. It can also be trapped line. And open reels like this do have slots on each side of the spool. They, you can't waterproof these because of the way the spool is. You can try, but sometimes the line breaks off, particularly if you're using fine braid. And I'm noticing that underneath that shock la uh, layer or leader is uh, well, fine braid. So we may find, uh, well, might find some crumpled up braid. This is used on a charter boat. That means that somebody else is using that reel most of the time. Every other day, some another customer comes in uh, using it. And well, what that usually means is that, uh, one, they don't get serviced frequently. And two, they're subject to all kinds of levels of experience from the anglers themselves. Sometimes uh, folks know what they're doing. Sometimes they don't. And sometimes things break because well, I'll, I'll call it operator error. There was a uh, bell washer. You just noticed I took that out and cleaned it. I'm going to clean the base of the star adjuster so that we have that nice and clean and free of debris. And then we'll uh, remove those side plate screws to see what's going on in this room. There are two big screws that are holding the top and two small screws that are holding the bottom. The, uh, the big screws are Phillips head. Well, let's get the Phillips head screwdriver that fits, and let's remove those. There is a trim ring on these, a metal trim ring. I believe that's stainless steel, and that's another indication of the quality of the reel. When I take these off, I want to put these into a safe place for, so that I know where they are when I go to reinstall, and I use a parts tray for that. There's a lot of different ways to organize your your pieces and parts through disassembly. I would encourage you to find the one that works for you and uh, well stick with it 
because it's easy to lose pieces and parts and it's not really easy to get replacement parts. Well these two sets of screws are very different. You're not going to confuse them trying to put one into the other. But uh, sometimes you're going to notice that some of the screws are longer, shorter, wider, thicker, whatever. And uh, you want to just pay attention to those. And one of the best ways to do that, well, take pictures. If you use your cell phone camera or whatever, take the pictures at uh, various intersections where it's important. And, uh, well, that'll help you in the reassembly process uh, should you lose your way. All right, the screws are out. We should be able to remove this now. Well, one of the things I want to check for is if they're hiding a screw. Yep, they're hiding a screw. This, uh, this little pen tendency here to hide screws is uh, well, it's more common than you would suspect. So I need to work this trim ring off. There we go. There's one screw up here. So that's a lesson not to force your way through. This is a micro screw. And that needs to be removed in order to remove that side case. If you try to force it, well, you're going to just break something. Don't certainly don't want to do that. I think the pen squall is another one that kind of does this. But, of course, the pen squall is a lot newer reel. Now let's see if we can get that thing off. Well, it comes off easily. All right, well, what I'm seeing here is just a lot of dried grease at the moment. Other than that, the reel does seem to be okay. We're going to clean it all up and we'll take care of that. First thing I like to do is remove these two yoke springs. Because my history with these types of reels is that, well, I put it down, the next thing I know the, the spring is somewhere it shouldn't be, and I'm searching for it. All right, the springs are off. We should be able to remove the main gear. And then there's a little washer under that main gear. Then there's the yoke and the pinion gear. And uh, this is a dirty reel, but I'm wondering if the dirt is slowing it down that much. Those are your primary pieces, and what we will do is we'll take these off as well. But before I do that, I want to just take a moment, since I have my, my paper towel here, to, to wipe these things clean of the old grease. And if you need to, well, use a... Uh, a solvent like a penetrating oil to clean up some of the old greases. That's easy enough. You can use some uh, steel wool. If you find that it's stubborn or not coming off, you can buff it with that. And I like to put this on a paper towel when I do it because, well, any of the dirt and debris and the like that comes off doesn't get spread to other units. When you uh, take your gears off, check this gear doesn't have much uh, lubrication or oils or greases in it. But take a moment to pull through on those. Make sure that all of the channels for the teeth are clear. If you find that you're stuck with uh, a blob of grease or dirt or something, just run a little pick through there. Just like that. That'll uh, ensure that it, all those tracks are clean and that the grease... The gears can turn easily. Same thing we want to do on this one. We want to take that big washer. And this reel has an instant anti-reverse in it. Some of the reels that you open up will have a secondary dog uh, to help with the, uh, the backup or fail-safe, if you will, on that anti-reverse. This one does not. All right. This is one of the first reels that used the instant anti-reverse. It goes back to 2003. Uh, this is the inner sleeve for that. And you want to make sure that that is clean and free of grease. The instant anti-reverse works by having uh, friction. And if it's got grease, well, that grease is going to eliminate friction and make it a little bit harder. That's your backing washer for your main gear. I'll put that over here for a moment. Let's remove the drag stack. These drag washers are in good condition. Again, surprisingly, this is used on a charter boat, and well, the charter boat typically will have a lot of activity, and those gears and those drag washers will, will uh, fail. They will 
wear quickly because of the amount of times and number of trips out on the water. Okay, well we're doing the same thing we did with the other one, cleaning the surface. Again, you can buff this. This is just tarnish that won't clean off, but it's not going to hurt the reel either. And uh, you want to get the old greases and dirt out of there. If you leave the grease and dirt in there, it's going to become very abrasive. It's actually going to act like sandpaper. This is your traditional six drag system. Notice that the one with the wider hole belongs on the bottom of this reel. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for a moment because I do want to remove the axle shaft. I'm not certain it's been a while since I worked on this, but I'm not certain if there's a ball bearing under this or a bushing. Only one way to find out if you're not certain. Well, there's more than one way to find out, but this is the most expeditious. You can go to a schematic diagram and you can uh, see through the exploded view whether that is or isn't. In this case, this is a ball bearing. And so it's a good moment that we took the time to do that because you want to oil those ball bearings to keep them going. These are shielded bearings, so they will absorb the oil. And in this case, interestingly enough, that's your failure point. This is, uh, this is stuck. All right. So what I want to do on this one is I want to remove that screw. That's not going to be easy to do. So I'm going to have to go off camera and put this in a vise so that I can grab that screw. Okay, well fortunately the pen has two flat sides on this and so you can work that into a vise without worrying about the threads. I did remove that and sure enough this bearing is frozen. So I do have the replacement bearing. We're going to place that on. Spins nice and easy now. We'll do the same thing. Again, it's a shielded bearing so it will accept the oils. And I'm going to put that screw back in. And we should do a little bit better here in terms of performance. So what was happening with this is the in, the bearing was frozen. So now you're trying to turn the whole bearing in that case. Uh, it just doesn't work out all the time, right? I don't know. I may have to put this. Yeah, I'm going to have to put this back in the vise to, to make that last turn. Now we have a nice free turning bearing and that should fix this issue. Well, I got lucky here in that I didn't take these two little screws and put them into my parts tray when I was playing around with all of that. And you know, that's when things go bump in the night. You just don't uh, think you're going to have an issue. You just kind of want to get on to that next piece, which was trying to clean up that bearing. And before you know it, well, you run into trouble. Well, this is exactly what we suggested that the problem would either be, it would be on the gear side here, and that the problem most likely would be either old grease, we found old grease in here, or mechanical, in this case it's mechanical, the uh, bearing failed on the uh, core shaft, which made it real hard to drive this reel. All right, we've oiled the bearing, we're going to set that back in now. And now you got a nice free and easy turning main shaft. Next up is our retention ring. There's two studs that this retention ring sits on. And we can take care of those. Two small screws. I like this Klein tool screw starter here. Dick out in Pennsylvania who heads up Salt Strong sent this to me. And uh, well, I gotta be honest, he was kind enough to notice that I struggle with small screws and a couple, probably over a year, two years now, maybe he sent this to me. And that's become a regular part of my tool set and I've become quite dependent upon it. This is that big uh, washer that uh, sat on top of that. And then we're gonna go to the back here. This was the backing washer for your uh, main gear. I'm going to leave that off for a moment. Let's go up top and do those two pieces. We did clean the jack. Now we cleaned the jack, which cleaned the grease that was under the jack. I'm going to put some fresh grease back in here. You want to notice on this jack that there is a hole in the top of it. 
that hole needs to mesh with the stud on the um, free spool eccentric. If it doesn't mesh, you won't have a free spool eccentric working. All right, jack is in. Let's take the yoke. And grease the shoulders of the yoke. I'm using pen precision real grease for this. I uh, often say I don't care which grease you use, but make sure you use a fishing reel grease. And that just so happens that I'm working on a pen reel, but most of the time I'm going to be using the uh, pen precision reel grease on the reel. All right, with that up, notice that there is a slot in that pinion gear, and that slot faces in because that's going to connect with the spool. And you can do that right here. You can push down and make sure that it's in and connecting. All right, let's go back to our main gear. Now I can put that piece back in. I guess I could have left it there without it. We've cleaned all of the tracks in the main gear, so let's go ahead and grease. Now, you don't have to buy the pound container of grease or the five ounces of oil or whatever that container is, four ounces, I guess, of oil. They use pen precision oil too. They also use Lucas fishing, uh, fishing reel oil and Relax and things like that. Again, I'm not brand partial but uh, they are all fishing reel related lubricants. But uh, you can buy them in small convenience sets that will certainly last you a lifetime unless you're, you're doing this on a regular basis. In which case I would recommend that you do uh, buy the, the bigger one just because you save a few dollars in uh, bigger quantities. Alright, I'm going to use a drag grease on this just because it's got a commercial use to it. And, uh, well, you don't want these drying out and wearing prematurely. First one goes in over the top there. That's the wide one. We have two washers that have a rectangular type center. Those are keyed washers. One goes high and one goes low. The one in the middle has a circular center with two ears on it. It's called an eared washer. Those goes in the slot of the main. You alternate the, the fabric washer with the... Um, metals and this is the one that goes in the middle. It's an eared washer and you will find two slots or indentations in the main gear and they sit in there just like that. This is the last of the washers. Now when you grease a washer, don't over grease them. You'll see I'm using my, my gloved hand as a tool. You want to be able to see the cross hatching through there and if you have too much, wipe it off because, well, drag washers act as vices and they're going to clamp down and the clamping down is going to press out the grease and any excess, well, it's just not going to get used. It'll probably sit off to the side accumulating some dirt and debris and the next thing you know, well, the reel is not performing as it should. Remember those two springs, those are the ones that usually fall off, so they're the first off and the last on inside the case. Put those on now. Two things you want to do on the side case here, other than making sure it's clean and free of the debris. Just clean it up. This is a uh, terminal for your spool. A little bit of grease onto the eccentric. And what I like to do here is take a cotton swab and just make sure the inner piece of this anti-reverse clutch is clean. Get that dirt off of there. Again, that dirt's going to get in the way. It's going to prevent the friction that's needed. It's going to prevent a, a nice firm seal against the inner sleeve. And well, when it does that, you, you may have a skip in your anti-reverse. This is ready for the case then. We're going to go ahead and bring this back on. And now you should be in the up position for your eccentric. And then if you just slide it a little bit, usually that's going to find that slot in the jack. You just heard it close nice and tight. It's going to find the slot there. And it will uh, pull it in, and uh, well, you will have it properly set. Now for that annoying little screw there that goes in first. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, 
Maybe you're working on one and you just uh, you're stuck on something. Maybe you didn't take a picture and you can't figure out where the part goes. Whatever. If you uh, leave those questions in the comment section, I will try to answer those for you and uh, get you back on your way. Well, that ring went back in easier than it came out, that's for sure. Now we're going to put the two bigger screws into the hole in the, in the trim ring. I'll tighten this side up and we'll go over to the other side. There's a, a bearing on the spool. There's a bearing in the case. We want to make sure that we take care of those. We know they're spinning freely. We did that in the original test. But again, we want to just make sure. There we go. Everything's nice and tight there. Next up is a little tension washer. Oh, that goes on the handle. Oops. This is the tension washer I want. I like to put this in the up position. Cup facing up. And our adjuster. Be careful as you start this. You need to have it go on square. If it doesn't go on square, you're going to cross strip the the main shaft and that's going to be problematic. It'll either cross strip the threads inside the star adjuster or you will cross strip the threads on the uh, on the post. Well I just looked down there and I saw that I was putting that on and I didn't put these two screws in the bottom of the case. That's another advantage to me in that um, Parts tray. Look in the parts tray. If you see something in there that you think probably should have been installed earlier, or, well, it probably should have been. Or if you're at the end of job and you find that there's an extra piece there, that's always the most nerve-wracking of all. And you want to make sure that you uh, take care of that in your parts management system. Okay, that goes on behind here. This goes on next. If you're doing this work for somebody else, notice where they used or which slot in the handle they used. Sometimes they like the full leverage out. And if that's the case, just like that. We're going to tighten this up. And generally, if this is perpendicular to the hole, or if you have a point pointing right at the hole, then this uh, retainer cap is going to line up as it should, and that's what's happening here. Put that little cap screw back in, and then we'll go over the other side and finish this reel. While I have the handle out, there is an oil port on this handle right here. That's one of the reasons why I like this Lucas oil, is because it has the oiler in it, and that helps a lot. All right, there's three screws, and it's probably a, a mini screw under the the ring here we'll find out in a moment, but we want to take this side off to complete the servicing. Well, as I mentioned, this is one of my favorite pen reels. I guess by today's standards it would be the Fathom or the Squall that would line up with it. Probably the, the Squall 15, maybe the 20 size. And uh, well, I had the opportunity to ask the folks over at Penn at the uh, recent Saltwater Expo, what's the difference? And uh, well, I learned that the difference is the uh, Squall has a carbon body and the Fathom has a metal body. Well, there probably was a small screw here at one point. It's not there now. That's okay. Sometimes you get frustrated that it's missing, but one of the things it does tell you is the reel has been serviced. There's a bearing here. Let's make sure that we oil that bearing. I oil bearings. I don't uh, grease them. And there should be a bearing. Yep, right there. And this one is a sealed bearing. So, well, you don't do anything with a sealed bearing because you can't get the oil in it. So let's just place that bearing back on. Wipe off the main shaft. And, uh, well, we're ready to go back in. One of the things I recommend that uh, you do to keep yourself from uh, having issues is take a little rubber band when you're doing this. Put the rubber band on your reel. And that's going to hold this. Remember what we were saying about line trapping. 
it's going to hold it from trapping. This um, can get reinstalled. Now you can put a, a drop of oil where the inner race is meeting that spool. That will uh, help lubricate it. Again, you don't need to oil that bearing because, well, it's not going to accept the oil. One of the things I'm trying to do right now, there you go. I had to align the um, the bearing with that uh, inner shaft. Uh, something's not not right yet. Let's uh, let's take this out. Bring the let's put the bearing in the case this way. Let's take the tension off of it. There you go. That's a whole lot better. If you uh, find something's binding, don't force it. Just uh, step back for a moment. Ask yourself uh, what could go wrong. Reset, and uh, well, generally you're going to be better off for it. All right. The name on the side plate is usually uh, parallel with the base of the reel. Line up the holes. Let's bring that trim ring in. If I had a small screw like the other one that was used, I'd put it in there, but I do not. So I'm going to have to depend on that trim ring holding that top in. Doesn't look like that's going to be the issue. I fully expect that this reel will work nicely now. I think we identified the issue. It was this frozen bearing. And, well, folks ask me a lot, should I change out the bearings on my reel? Uh, what about ceramic bearings? Do they perform any better? Well, ceramic bearings won't rust. Typically, they're a lot noisier, but uh, they won't rust. The answer to my question is, if the bearing is not talking to you, you don't necessarily need to replace it. If you've kept it well maintained and oiled and debris free, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you want to, well, that's clearly your decision. Okay, let's see how we did here. Well, we got a nice spinning spool here. This spool is adjustable. You can use the, uh, the uh, spool adjuster knob on this side to do that. More importantly, let's go into gear. Look at this. Turn it with a finger. So what we found was the issue here was caused by a frozen bearing on the gear shaft. And that frozen bearing on the gear shaft caused all kinds of issues in terms of having to turn this in that uh, bushing indentation. And of course the friction from jamming on that side of the plate all of the time uh, slowed the reel down. And we determined that it was going to be over here in the case because well, we put it in gear and the spool was turning freely. Make sure that you adjust and test your, your drag washers since you removed them. They're nice and tight. Perfect. And uh, well, this reel is ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, I thank you for your dedication to service and task. Our professionals in law enforcement and fire and safety and our EMTs and the like and rescue, thank you. Uh, to everybody, well, lessons learned. I'm always, it's always more fun to find something that's wrong with a reel and add it to your your knowledge base, if you will, and just keep servicing reels that haven't haven't been broken. So I would encourage you go to flea markets and yard sales and garage sales and whatever they are called in your neck of the woods, and uh, well, buy some that aren't working or some that are working poorly. Take them apart and learn from them. I call those tuition reels. I would encourage you to do that in uh, expanding your, your knowledge of fishing reel repair and why fishing reels break. To everyone, I wish you great success on the water. Have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.